Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the KevTech Fi Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at IPS signatures. We'll be discussing IPS signature attributes, types of signatures, IPS signature alarms, IPS signature actions, and finally, evalu evaluating alerts. This episode is part of my series on network security. I'm Kevin here at KevTechify. Let's get this adventure started. The signature must be able to identify incoming malicious traffic. It has to do this in order to stop it. Fortunately, malicious traffic displays distinct characteristics. It looks a certain way, and this is referred to as signatures. Signatures uniquely identify specific worms, viruses, protocol, anal protocol anomalies, and malicious traffic. Prevention system sensors must be tuned to look for matching signatures or abnormal traffic patterns. As sensors scan your network packets, they use these signatures to detect known attacks and respond with predefined actions. An IDS or IPS sensor examines the data flow using many different signatures. Now, these signatures have three distinctive attributes, which is the type, the type of um, signature. It can either be atomic or composite. The next attribute is the trigger. We also call them alarms. And then the third one here is action. What will that prevention system do? Some threats can be identified in one packet while others may require many packets and their state information, their IP addresses, port numbers, and a lot of other information to identify those threats. There are two types of signatures. The first one we have here is the atomic signature. Now, this is the simplest type of signature because it's a single packet activity or event that identifies the attack. Single packet activity or event that identifies that packet. The intrusion prevention system does not need to maintain state information or traffic analysis, and it can usually be performed very quickly and efficiently. The composite signature here, also called a stateful signature because the IPS requires several pieces of data to match an attack signature. Now, the IPS must also maintain state information, which is referred to as that event horizon. The length of the event horizon varies from one signature to the next. The heart of any IPS signature is the signature alarm, which is often referred to as the signature trigger. Every IPS incorporates signatures that use one or more of these basic triggering mechanisms to trigger signature actions. Now, there are four general IPS signature trigger categories. The first one here is pattern-based detection. This is also known as a signature-based detection. It's the simplest triggering mechanism as it searches for a specific and predefined atomic or composite pattern. An IPS sensor compares that network traffic to a database of known attacks and triggers an alarm or prevents communication if a match is found. The second trigger category is a nominally based detection. This is also known as profile based detection. It involves first defining a profile of what is considered normal network or host activity. This normal profile is usually defined by monitoring traffic and establishing a baseline for your system. Once determined, any activity beyond a specified threshold in a normal profile will generate a signature trigger and action. The third one here is a policy-based detection. This is also known as behavior-based detection. Although similar to a pattern-based detection, an administrator manually defines behaviors that are suspicious based on historical analysis. The use of behaviors enables a single signature to cover an entire class of activities without having to specify each individual situation. And our final trigger category is the honeypot-based detection. Honey-based pot, honeypot-based detection uses a server as a decoy server to attract attacks. 
Now, the purpose of this decoy server is to lure attacks away from your production servers, your production devices. This allows your administrator, it allows you time to analyze incoming attacks and malicious traffic patterns to tune the different sensor algorithms. If you like this episode on IPS signatures and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. You can visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. There are several IPS signature actions. We can put them in a category and then once they're in a category, we can specify what action is to be taken. Up here to start with, we have generate an alert. Sorry, generate an alert. Now, this alert, it can either be a normal alert or verbose. And verbose means we're going to send lots and lots of detailed information. Next, we can log the activity. When we log the activity, we have three different actions we can do. We can log the attacker packets. Now, this logs the packets from the attacker IP address, and then it sends an alert. We can log pair packets. And this logs the packets from the victim and hack or sorry, victim and attacker IP addresses and sends an alert. And then finally we can log victim packets. And this logs the packets from the victim IP address and sends an alert. Then for our alert category, we can deny the activity. Different actions we can do is we can deny attacker in line. And that terminates that current packet and future packets from the attacker address for a specified period of time. We can deny connection in line. And what that does is it logs packets from the victim IP address and then it sends an alert. And then finally, we can deny packet in line. This terminates the current packet and future packets from this attacker address for the specified period of time. We can reset the TCP connection. And what that does is it sends a TP, sends TCP resets to hijack and terminate that t TCP flow there. So we can reset that connection. And then finally, we can block future activity. And the different actions we can do with that is we can request a block connection. And this sends a request to a blocking device to block this connection. So you send a request to a blocking device. We can send a block host, so, or we can request a block host. And what this does is it sends a request to a blocking device to block a specific attacker. And then finally, we can request an SNMP trap. And this sends a request to the notification applica application component of the sensor to perform an SNMP notification. Alerts can be classified in a couple of different ways. The first way here is a true positive. Now, this true positive, this is desirable. And this is used when the IPS, your intrusion prevention system, generates an alarm because it detects a known attack traffic. Now, the alert has been verified to be actual to be an actual security incident, and it also indicates that the IPS rule worked correctly. The second method to evaluate traffic is a true negative. This also is desirable. Now, this is used when normal network traffic does not generate an alarm. No alerts are issued because the traffic that is passing through the system is clear of threats. There is no threats that are happening. This is just normal people doing normal stuff on your network. The next way to classify it here, this is a false positive. This is undesirable. So undesirable. This is used when your intrusion prevention system generates an alarm after processing normal traffic that should not have triggered an alarm. Once again, your IPS generates an alarm here after processing normal traffic, normal traffic without any threats in it, and it should not generate an alarm. So it generated an alarm, but it shouldn't have. The 
IPS must be tuned to change these alarm types to true negatives. <laughs> the alert does not indicate an actual security incident. Benign activity that results in a false positive is sometimes referred to as a benign trigger. False positives are costly because they must be investigated. And the last way here is a false negative. This here, this is dangerous. So dangerous. This is used when an IPS fails to generate an alarm and known attacks are not being detected. So your IPS is not generating alarms to known attacks. This is, this is very dangerous here. This means that exploits are not being detected by your security systems that are in place. These incidents could go undetected for a long time and ongoing, and ongoing data loss and damage could result. The goal is for these alarms to generate true positive alarms. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on IPS signatures. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com, and you can get all of these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on network security. In the bottom right is one of my favorite episodes that I picked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode on my series of network security. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.